Standard. How will Magic the Gathering's newest set, Adventures in the Forgotten Realms, change the premier format of the game? What new decks will emerge? Which existing decks will fade? And what are the biggest and best cards from the set to impact and shape these changes in the format? Well, the answer is exactly what it was for Strixhaven, and that is... It won't matter, not as long as Throne of Eldraine is still legal in the format, pushing these underpowered recent sets to the sidelines. Now, don't take that as a complaint about Forgotten Realms and Strixhaven being underpowered. Far from it. The culprit is, and has been, the wildly pushed and overpowered cards of Eldraine. And once that set thankfully rotates out of standard, then we'll get to see wild new decks and strategies emerge to fill that void. But until that point, there's still a plethora of formats that will make great use of these new cards, because underpowered as a whole does not mean there aren't still gems to be found and make waves in other areas, namely modern. Presented here are the top five cards from the Forgotten Realms for modern. But before we begin, a quick word about this video. This video is sponsored by Keeps, a subscription men's health brand for hair loss prevention. Just as for some of us, Modern is a solution to hard to control Eldraine saturated metas like Standard, so too is Keeps a way to take control of the health of your hair. Something that can be tough when our body doesn't do what we want it to do. Well, that's where Keeps comes in. Keeps is literally just the generic version of the only two F FDA approved hair loss products, plain and simple. You work with a licensed doctor via online consultation so that you can get the generic version of these medications. Unlike Modern, Keeps is significantly more affordable than those effective yet expensive name brands. So that's Keeps medication at a huge savings, and it's available for you should you want it. The medication is delivered right to your door, all of which makes for a safe, secure, and easy process. And remember, there is absolutely nothing wrong with being bald or going bald, just as there's nothing wrong with playing a format like Standard. You are gorgeous and sexy however and whoever you are, and if you want to sit down in a salt eye control mirror for the millionth time, hey, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But for some of us out there, we like to play in a format like Modern so that we can have a wider range of choices in what we play, or we just want to present ourselves how we wish to present ourselves. And if that's you, if you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com forward slash Tolarian, or click the link in the description to receive 50% off your first choice. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Tolarian. Remember, the true sexy is being yourself. Long hair or standard or neither or urian control mirrors or the diverse and exciting modern format. For some of us, keeps can help us shape ourselves as we choose and, unlike modern, actually save a few bucks along the way. Thank you, keeps, for sponsoring this video. As usual, I'd like to begin with an honorable mention. This is a looser slot where I like to show off splashy, interesting, or maybe just fun build around me cards. And I think my pick for this set might be all of the above. It's Wish. No, not Burning Wish, not Glittering Wish, not Dying Wish, or even Well Wisher. Just plain, simple Wish. Two mana of any color and a red for a sorcery that says you may play a card you own from outside the game this turn. There it is. No fuss, no muss. A 3CMC Demonic Tutor for the sideboard that requires you to play the card this turn. In red, which I feel probably rules out ad nauseum decks wanting this. And besides, thanks to Modern Horizons 2, those now have Profane Tutor. So the real obvious destination for this card is a Storm deck. Which, hey, I think it's great that Storm gets new toys, as it's one of the best budget decks for Modern these days. But as far as I'm concerned, my real interest with this card is in ad as Foretold decks. As Foretold is a fun little deck made all the more fun with Wish allowing it to go into its sideboard for just the right suspend spell. 
well, be it Restore Balance, Glimpse of Tomorrow, or of course, Crashing Footfalls. What's great is Wish doesn't exile itself, meaning that cards like Snapcaster Mage can target it for another go. Or since this reads Play and not Cast, you can always just grab a land. Hey, how about an Urza's Saga, perhaps? At the end of the day, it's still arguably slow and pretty fringe, but it's a fun card in addition to the format nonetheless and worthy of an honorable mention. But getting to the list of actual spice, we begin with number five, Grim Wanderer. Grim Wanderer is one in a black for a 5-3 Goblin Warlock with Flash, and it has a tragic backstory. Cast this spell only if a creature died this turn. Don't let the card's name, color, illustration, power, toughness, or abilities fool you. It's a goblin. No, really, this is a goblin. And as such, already a shoe in for modern because hot damn goblins. If there's one thing goblins like to do, it's go pop. Whether by blocking an enemy, being blocked by an enemy, or hurled by a catapult at our opponent's face. What's great is that tragic backstory is really just a convoluted and confusing way of saying morbid. Which means if one of our opponent's creatures dies to removal, we can flash this in just as easily as when our own go splat. With such a low converted mana cost, Grim Wanderer can also be a nice target for Aether Vile, which does a clever little reach around on the morbid trigger. When you factor in the heavy goblin synergy that modern goblins grant one another, it's hard to imagine this doesn't see play. And splashing in black opens the deck up to other morbid antics, like Tragic Slip or maybe just a bump in the night. But coming in at number four is even more value, so much so that those people who loved playing Phoenix decks and had to say goodnight to Arc Light can now replace it with a big old Demolich. Demolich is blue and a blue and a blue and another blue, or is it? For a skeleton wizard that costs blue less to cast for each instant and sorcery you've cast this turn. You see where I'm going with this? Whenever Demolich attacks, exile up to one target instant or sorcery card from your graveyard. Copy it. You may cast the copy. But wait, there's more. You may cast Demolich from your graveyard by exiling four instants and or sorcery cards from your graveyard in addition to paying its other costs. It's a 4-3, so that's a thing. And most red-blue spells type decks are going to look at how soon they can rush this out. From Blitz to Prowess to Phoenix Builds, this can be cast for a lot less than four blue mana. It gives us values such as extra lightning bolts when it attacks and can even be brought back with a Delve-like ability. Delve is strong and modern, right? Well, it was till they had to ban it. And don't let the quadruple blue fool you. This card is very, very splat thanks to its cost-reducing nature. And with a well-timed Manamorphous, a Bolt of Lightning, and maybe a few Serum Visions or Opts, this is going to be one scary threat early and often. Pay attention now, because at number three, class is in session. Ah, but which one? I actually love all the classes and what they offered the format, and think several of them are likely to see play in one form or another, but in having to restrict myself to the very top five, only one of them made it high enough to hit the list, and it's the wily sorcerers themselves with sorcerer class. This is one blue and a red for an enchantment. When sorcerer class enters the battlefield, draw two cards, then discard two cards. At level two, creatures you control have tap to add blue or red, spend this mana only to cast an instant or sorcery spell or to gain a class level. And if we make it to level three, well, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, that spell deals damage to each opponent equal to the number of instant or sorcery spells you've cast this turn. I love this. And what's great is this is not just slotting into an existing deck to make it slightly better, but it's likely going to give birth to a whole new deck, namely some form of can-tripping tokens build that uses Young Pyromancer and First Day of Class for maximum value. Young Pyromancer is such a fantastic card, but it's been largely outclassed in modern for a while now. But with Sorcerer class, we give major advantage to all the many tokens it creates, plus electrifying power to all the cantrips we need to create those tokens. What a fun deck I think this is going to be. Throw in First Day of Class, a common that has enabled the fun and powerful Squirrel Storm deck in Popper, and here it gives the same sort of advantage to the Pyromancer's tokens, letting them do hasty work and added damage the turn they come into play, all while itself creating further tokens and synergizing with Sorcerer class once it's been leveled up. I think this spell is flying under the radar of a lot of people, but I feel confident it's going to be a format favorite in the meta to come. So what are the top two picks for Modern from Forgotten Realms? 
As usual, it's a bit of a close call, as both these cards entice and excite me with their potential in the format. But coming in at number two, I'm gonna say it's Guardian of Faith. Guardian of Faith is a 3-2 Spirit Knight for double white and one of any color. It has Flash and Vigilance, and when Guardian of Faith enters the battlefield, any number of target creatures you control phase out. That means treat them and anything attached to them as though they don't exist until their controller's next turn. Well, there's one modern tribal deck that this is perfect for, and it's so obvious. I probably shouldn't have to say it, because we all know it's Modern Knights. Wait, no, sorry, not Modern Knights. Although that is is a thing for those people who think modern merfolk is too competitively successful for their taste. But actually, the deck this goes in is Modern Spirits. Like my beloved merfolk, of which Modern Spirits is often called, quote unquote, the good version of, the biggest obstacle is always a blowout board wipe. From all is dust to engineered explosives to terminus and a plethora of other nasty nasties, Guardian of Faith serves as a Modern Spirits version of Teferi's protection. Best of all, due to the nature of phasing, cards like Spell Queller do not technically leave the battlefield. So whatever spell we have quelled stays quelled. This is actually why many other decks may also be trying this card out, as equipment stays equipped, tokens stay token, and counters stay on top of whatever they are on top of. Because this has flash, it can also be a clever way to block during a full swing, but then save our blockers and have them ready to do some damage on the smack back. Either way, this card is cool, a shoe in for spirits, and possibly even of interest to a few other brews. Maybe even Modern Knights, or Blue-White Merfolk, or even a good deck. So what's my number one pick from the Forgotten Realms for Modern? Well, it's a card that is going to pop possibly give Modern a deck that's almost as powerful as its Popper counterpart, almost, but it's Modern, so we'll take what we can get. The deck is Affinity, and that card is Treasure Vault. Treasure Vault is an artifact land, yes, an artifact land that comes into play untapped. Woohoo! You can tap it for a colorless, or spend X and X and tap to sacrifice Treasure Vault and create X treasure tokens. Okay, we get it, Wizards of the Coast. You're really, really sorry for having to ban Mox Opal because of Modern Horizons 1 and Urza. And you've been trying to make up for it. First, ironically, with Urza's Saga, and now, just to be sure, with Treasure Vault, which coincidentally can be grabbed by Urza's Saga and is itself an artifact land that comes into play untapped, which is exactly what the Mirrodin artifact lands needed to be banned from the format because of. Who cares that it only makes colorless? It's an artifact artifact land that comes into play untapped in Modern. Hello, Affinity. I mean, this potentially could even bring actual Affinity cards back into Modern Affinity. Not to mention that Treasure Vault also offers some interesting mana ramp for the late game in other decks, or just a late game power up for Urza's constructs, while working well as a potential mana sink for a deck like Mono Blue Tron. The fact so many different decks can make advantage of this early and late game means this is likely going to find at least one major spot to resonate in, if not more. And there's still another type of card that loves this as well, and there's still another type of card that loves this, and that's things with Metal Craft. So suddenly Dispatch becomes worth a second look. Galvanic Blast might make the cut as well. I can't believe how good this card is. And best of all, we might just get Affinity with actual Affinity in it, making it almost as strong as Popper Affinity, only in Modern. Let it be true. But hey, now I want to hear from you. Are there modern gems in this set that I didn't list that you think will have an effect on the format? Let me know what they are and where you think they'll go, and let's shuffle up and get some games. And remember, if you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com forward slash Tolarian, or click the link in the description to receive 50% off your first order. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Tolarian. Remember, there's nothing wrong with whatever format you play or however your hairline is. It's about us choosing what is best for us, whether that's modern or looking into hair loss solutions like Keeps. Thank you, Keeps, for sponsoring this video. They've just started previewing Kamigawa Dance Party, a cyberpunk Kamigawa set that will exclusively feature the characters of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. You know, I always thought they were from New York. Who cares, Brian? Have you not seen the preview images on the official Magic the Gathering Legends Action RPG account and what they've been tweeting? Wait, didn't that close before it could even get out of beta? That's unimportant, Brian. Focus. New Orc cards, Warhammer Commander deck, 
Apparently you have to shout war at the top of your lungs when you cast an orc. I don't want to shout war at the top of my lungs when I cast an orc. <laughs>